American parachutists are fighting today from Port Moresby to North Africa. They're trained to battle in any part of the world, in any climate, on any terrain, desert or snow. The training is tough. So is the job. Here's how a fighting paratrooper is made. Our man begins by learning to jump, to tumble, to fall. Here's a machine that builds bodies. The training gets tougher, up in a harness for a quick slide to the ground to give him the feeling of movement in the air. A wind machine is used to fill the practice chute so he can learn to handle his parachute on the ground. Next, he drops from a 200-foot tower in a parachute chair. He gets an idea of height and view. And the sensation of coming down quickly. Now he is closer to the real thing. He is hoisted by cable, and he learns how it feels when a parachute opens. He knows his parachute. He learns to pack it, fold by fold, each in its own place, for compactness and order. To check it, every cord coiled accurately and in position. He gives it scrupulous care, for on his parachute hangs his life. Using a dummy plane, he learns to time his jumps. Back to the tower again, jumping with a parachute already inflated. He's ready now and equipped with a helmet to guard his face from snapping rope lines and high boots to break the landing shot. He's up for final inspection. The plane is ready and so are the men. below are the objective must locate, carefully plotted on aerial maps. Stand up is the order from the jump master. Hook static lines. The men help each other with the last minute checkup. Wait. To the door. Jump. 18 men in 10 seconds, their first jump. They drift to their objectives, working shroud lines to guide them. Ready for action, with rifle and demolition kit. But a paratrooper must be master of many arts. He fights not only in Europe, not only in the deserts and jungles of Africa, but in the snows of the Arctic. So one company goes back to school again, for special ski training to learn to fight when the thermometer drops to 20 below. New techniques, new equipment, new skills. He learns how to wax his skis.
First is the business of learning how to walk. Clumsy at first. A new way of falling. He thought he knew them all. How to brake at high speeds. The snow plow with knees bent, tips of the skis brought together, pressure on the inside edge of the runners. How to swing arms and shoulders from the hips so that he can do Christie's and tempo turns downhill. But skiing is uphill work too. He learns the sidestep and the herringbone. He learns to make a right about face on skis in deep snow. This is how a column works its way up a mountain. Now he's at home on skis. The white suit issued for camouflage makes him part of the landscape. In combat, he will whiten his face, his pack, his rifle too. He learns how to live in the snow. How to trap down the snow into hard camping ground. He learns to cook with snow. He learns to sleep in the snow, gun and skis within easy reach. Back to camp and back to parachutes. This time into the aerial packs go skis as well as guns. The next jump will combine the old and new training. He's in the air now, and he's ready to combine his three skills, the fighter, the jumper and the skier, product of a new training for a new kind of war. Light colored shoots carrying men, dark or brightly colored ones carrying arms and ammunition. It's an odd graduation, this, into the strangest field of ultra-modern war. But these men are ready for it. And pick volunteers, parachute specialists, soldiers trained to fight around the world. 